Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zade here with another episode of Zade's Experience. Today's going to be a little bit different. We have Pim Jansen, correct? I didn't chop yeah. that up. You did uh, well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> on the channel today, she's going to be talking about her experience. She's been a carnivore-ish, uh, keto carnivore-ish, correct? Yep. Well, let's uh, say keto carnivore. I think I like that too. Yeah, keto. I think it. I think it mixes both of the things well. Uh, so she's been a uh, keto carnivore for over the past like ten years. She's been dabbling into the world of eating sugar, not eating sugar, eating carbs, not eating carbs. You know all that stuff. And she's gonna talk about her experiences with a carnivore diet. And yeah, hello, Pim. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Thank you very much. I'm good, thank you. It's a little bit cold here this morning, but I'm good. And um, I'm I'm looking forward to this because I have no idea what you're going to ask. So it's like, whoa, well, am I going to be able to answer the questions right? <laughs> nah, you definitely will. Again, this is uh, there's a reason why it's called today's experience. It's just your experience, yeah. what you've learned, and that's all we need. Uh, you know, cool. Just, you know, again, there's too many papers written. If you want papers, you can go ahead and get those at PubMed or something like yeah. that. But I, I like to hear and I like to get the experiences from from the people themselves. I like to talk to people and see, hey, what have you found in particular? What has helped you out? And my first question to you would be, um, what are you what are you doing right now that you could say or where, where did your journey start with all this, with all this keto carnivore? Oh, so. I am a nutritionist and I, I did experience like, Moving back, I used to work as a personal trainer and diet advisor, and that was in my young 20s. So that was a whole half a lifetime ago. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, then you get taught it was pretty cool. I thought at the time we were using all these programs to calculate the macros and seeing what micronutrients and vitamins and minerals you had in there and just like creating this perfect diet that I was giving to my clients. Yeah. And some clients got the results that they wanted, but a lot of them didn't. And I kind of took the blame for that. Aww. I was thinking, you know, why, why is this not working? So I started, I'm, I'm kind of a sciencey person. So I started looking into the science and I decided that I don't have enough experience to do this. I need to know more. I'm going to go to the university. And I'm going to become a nutritionist. So that's what I did. And lo and behold, my disappointment was, huge because they were just teaching me the stuff that i already knew mm. so once i finished my degree i started looking into the keto diet a lot more just right after i actually finished my degree which is funny so i guess what i got from my degree was that i got the uh, knowledge of how to ferret out good information from different research papers etc so i guess i got that sounds invaluable uh, actually <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Because now it seems easy and you, just something that I do, but I understand that it's not easy for everyone to actually do that. And it's much easier to go and read fitness magazines or just, you know, watching random YouTube videos with you and me, for example. But yeah. Yeah. what I found was like, okay, I'm going to try this. And I had tried a low carb, high fat diet before as a way of losing weight, but I didn't kind of connect that to being healthy. I just thought, you know, I'm a little bit fat, you know. When you when you're working in fitness, you think you're fat all the time, because everyone else is super skinny. Guilty. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. Guilty. And, and I'm I'm not naturally a very skinny person. I have broader shoulders and broader hips than most people. I'm half Swedish. I'm half South American, so my hips are I'm going bigger. to be broader than most Swedish people where I grew up. Yes. Um, so yeah i started trying that out and i was still exercising a lot and the first time i went into keto i was just like i feel like shit i really yeah. don't feel good <laughs> but i was going at this yeah you can have 50 grams of carbs per day or maybe 20 so i was eating really low carb but i had one fruit a day because i'm a sugar addict so i was like okay if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna have my one fruit a day wow. and i tried to jog at a very very slow pace and I could barely lift my legs. I was like, what the hell is going on? It's like, I have lead legs. I can't move. And then I went on and I found Mark Sisson and was reading on his forum. I guess you know who Mark Sisson is. Yeah. No. And I someone actually, said, no? no? Okay. No, I actually don't know. Uh, really? Okay. So he's kind of paleo-ish, 
more carnivore these days. Um, he has a huge blog called Mark's Daily Apple. He's written several books. The first one was uh, the uh, something blueprint, Primal Blueprint, I think it was called. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know who he is now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I... So I went on his forum and someone said, hey, cut that fruit out. And I was like, shit, really? <laughs> I'm not eating any carbs. Cut the fruit out within three days. Boom, I was back up to my old level of, you know, energy. I went to spin classes. I went doing all sort of things at the gym. And I was like, wow, really? <laughs> I feel just like normal. Wow. But I don't have the brain fog. I don't get the headaches that I used to have because I used to have headaches three, four times per day when uh, before eating uh, carnivore. Speaking of which, when I was studying nutrition, I always had fruit or something with me to eat during the lectures because I would fall asleep if I didn't have anything to eat. Yeah, and, about and sorry to interrupt you. Um, yeah, go on. Do you think that the way that you started eating, like really started to aid you in, in combating all of those things. Like, you know, um, it sounds like, like you said, um, a lot of the brain fog went away, a lot of yeah. all that stuff just started to kind of dissipate. And so that's kind of what started propelling you towards like getting more and more into that realm of like, uh, no, I don't think it was the brain fog. I don't think I, you know, made that connection until I had actually tried it. For me, it was more a way of trying to be, you know, find my optimal health, my optimal weight, because no matter what I was doing, I always had a little bit of baby fat, if you want to call it that. <laughs> it's, it's not, I've never been ripped or lean like most of my colleagues used to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing wrong? You know, I knew I was eating pretty much perfect according to what I was taught. I know the feeling. But then I, well, yeah, I had the cherry on the top, which was always some sugar. And that kind of escalated and became more and more sugar throughout the years. But I've been drawn to sugar since pretty much as long as I can remember. You know, I remember being maybe five, six years old, climbing on the chairs because I knew mm -hmm. I did it early in the morning before my mom woke up because I knew she was hiding cookies up in the cupboard and I was going to steal them in the morning so she wouldn't notice. You know, that's ah. kind of <laughs> crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's so snarly um yeah. and, and in the in regards to that whole sugar thing um as i was talking to you a little bit prior to the whole mm -hmm. the starting this off you said that you had a sugar addiction and i mm -hmm. want to tap into that right now but i wanted right. to say when i started digging deep because i've always had this sugar crave at least once a day it doesn't matter if i'm carnivore or whatever like there's always something yeah. that triggers it and it's usually fruit and it's usually an acidic fruit like a, um, like an mm, orange. Uh, what do you call the other ones? The the really sour oranges looking like the bigger ones. Ah, I can't remember. Um, grapefruit. Is that the grapefruit? grapefruit yeah, yeah. Oof, they're horrible. <laughs> I love grapefruits. I love that sourness. And when I checked out my genes, I found out that I ha that I one of my like one of my genes really really like coded for me to actually uh like sweet stuff versus salty stuff. Yeah. And so that was something that I found. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Me and my go girlfriend were going through them. And, and she's like, cool. no wonder. You're crazy. Um, but yeah. I have, so, to do that. I have to take that gene test at some point, I think. I, I highly suggest it. I think it's it's really revelatory in many ways. And although sometimes you find stuff that you might not like, it's also really good to be aware of them, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, highly suggest that. Um, but yeah, with the sugar addiction. So how yeah. did you start to combat that what, what what was i guess uh, out of all this time you started finding out different tools you went to school you studied um you had some prior knowledge you know you were working out on the field and then um by the time you got to the university and you got your degree you were pretty well versed and you've been through a bunch of stuff uh i and, still i couldn't quit <laughs> uh, you still couldn't quit like sugar no Crazy, isn't it? We have all this knowledge, knowing how bad it is, and still I could not quit. I don't find all sorts of things. Yeah, go on. And, and that's the thing. Like, I don't think you're you're a bad person for for ooh, you're eating sugar bad. Um, it's it's I I think it's uh, 
an impulse. There's a reason why that impulse exists. Just like everybody likes to talk about, oh, we were carnivore before anything. Well, there were also fruits on trees. There were also a bunch of stuff. There was scarcity of food. Right now we live in a place mm -hmm. where there's an overabundance of food and we tend to forget that it wasn't always like that. You know, yeah. I also have a, a a a gene in particular, or and there's a couple of things that actually point to my thought process as to why I gain weight a lot easier than most people, and that yeah. is, um, some of the genes, the way like the the genes that I have in particular, the ones that are actually turned on, and they're both like um, I believe I can't, I always forget heterozygous or homozygous which one's the, the one where they're both activated <laughs> at the same time I, I, two of the same yeah it's like well we're, we're well you have two copies of the same one yeah. um a lot of the genes that might, might a lot of people might say dude you're like coded to be fat like yeah. <laughs> uh uh he's <laughs> right <laughs> um so i started seeing that in my genes and it's a good thing to know that you have that, but it's also, you can't bang yourself up for, you know, having to be drawn to those things like, you know, fruit or something like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's totally normal. I think though it does give you the tools to be more knowledgeable about it and to do something about it. And I think that's the ultimate thing, you know, which is what it sounds, what you did, you know, over time school, yeah. you learned a bunch of stuff and you learned how to do the research and you went through stuff. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, I had a lot of knowledge about the nutrition. I tried things that like, you know, using copper and zinc and those kind of things for supplements that are supposed to regulate your blood sugar or help you to not have cravings. No results whatsoever. I was dabbling with amino acids a little bit, but probably didn't do it quite right. But I was like, meh, I don't know if there's anything. What amino so, acids did you try? Oh God, this was so many years ago. I have a book in my bookshelf. Um, God, what's her name? The, the the diet cure Julia Ross, I think, and oh. she's uh, she's pretty good. Um, she's written several books yeah. with different recommendations. So you have, depending on what sort of cravings you have, when you have cravings, you will have to identify whether they are coming from, you know, a blood sugar dysregulation or if there is an imbalance in your brain chemicals, or whatever it is. So it could be anything like GABA, 5-HTP, glutamine, um, lots of different things. So I, I can remember trying some of them, but okay. I, I probably didn't do it right at the time. It, no, sounds, it sounds pretty complex, you know, it, 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 it doesn't seem yeah. like an easy thing to point out. And, and I can relate to that. Sometimes I'm craving um, sugary stuff and sometimes i'm craving really salty stuff and that's those are the only two things you know yeah. like nothing in between um so yeah i, t I totally relate to that but no, yeah go ahead uh, no i think when, if you're gonna do like amino acid therapy you probably want to work with someone who knows what they're doing but i think both you and i we are like like self-experimenting so i'm like i'm gonna sort this on my own and i'll deny nah, it doesn't work <laughs> so but, yeah I probably should have found someone who knew exactly what to look for and how to do it it but it's tough to do it right because you know you yeah. have all this knowledge you've worked out on the field you've tried out mm -hmm. stuff and then when you go to these people that have all not all of them but a lot of mm -hmm. nutritionists a lot of people uh tend to have a very set way of thinking this is what the book yeah. says this is yeah. what has worked in the past for these guys and for the people that it's worked for obviously they were doing the right things and for for the ones that it didn't obviously they were doing it wrong and yeah. so there's there's only like those two approaches for them and it, i've gone to several nutritionists and to all the nutritionists i've gone they're like oh well you're not eating clean enough and i'm like literally i have my six to seven meals a day back in the day when i was doing the whole bodybuilding thing and mm -hmm. i i was literally eating tuna um and spinach <laughs> uh chicken like <laughs> lean chicken oh my god i can't see a chicken right now oh, it must I, have been so tasteless <laughs> it is I, I my girlfriend likes eating chicken every now and then and i'm like mm -mm. Mm. for me it's like every month and then like if that happens you know i really try to get away from it um but yeah uh my next question to you would be have you delved in with with all this um into the world of fermentation um, um and if so yes what? and no. yeah. I, I haven't really um 
I am I'm <laughs> as I told you before I like making things I'm I should have been a farmer or something I like growing things there's so nothing I've wrong with that sauerkraut <laughs> yeah yeah sauerkraut and uh, water kefir I've been growing you know um how, how did you find water kefir for me water kefir I that was the one thing I wasn't able to drink regular okay. kefir I was a kefir kefir oh it's um, because I, I fermented for two three days yeah and I add a lot of sugar so it's like a sugar drink when it's done so it tastes good to me with my uh, sugar sweet tooth yeah but I, I I don't know I don't think I'm sick enough to notice a lot of difference Mm -hmm. when i'm ch changing things in my diet i'm one of these people i probably have very efficient enzymes that breaks down everything like toxins and medications and those kind of things in my body so i'm very i can drink a lot of alcohol i can take a lot of painkillers and they don't do much for me and i think it's the same thing with food i can probably abuse myself with quite a lot of food before i notice something mm -hmm. and doing something that is good for me i won't notice that i just yesterday on my live stream, I was talking to people. They were talking about feeling this liver high. And I'm like, what the fuck is a liver high? I don't feel anything <laughs> eating liver, but I'm doing it because it's yeah. actually, I know it's good for me. What but, the, a liver high. No, I, I, yeah. get, I get what they're saying, but it's like, <laughs> I've never heard it be put in, in those words. I have, I mean, as a Mexican-American, I'm really close to the border. I live in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, in Mexico, people here in the U.S. don't tend to eat a lot of liver or as much as mm -hmm. people in Mexico. I grew up with liver. My mom used to make liver with onions all the time. Like that was religion, like at least yeah. once a week. And never once from all my friends and all my family members did I ever heard about a liver high. You know, <laughs> so uh, I've yet to hear that. And, and yeah, we'll leave yeah. that one there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, keep on going. So my next experiment is actually going to be fermenting liver. I have said that I'm going to do it. Uh, I have still haven't dared doing it because I don't actually like liver, but I'm going to try it and mm. actually see what happens. But it looks terrible and it looks slimy, but why not try it? I like road things, as I said. And this is I've my thing. I wouldn't... Uh, I like liver. I can only tolerate it so many times a week, though, for whatever the reason. Um, okay. It might be that it might be too nutrient dense or whatever. Whatever the case is, if you really do want to supplement with that um, ancestral supplements, I'm pretty sure you've heard about them. I actually made a video mm -hmm. about them very recently, and I'm not getting yeah. paid by them or anything like that. But I have several of their supplements, and that is a perfect way to get um, organ meats or liver in the specific case that's just been dehydrated it turned into like a capsule and you literally drink it that's a perfect way to get um those types of yeah. food into somebody that doesn't want to consume them my girlfriend takes them and she she sees a difference my dad started taking them and he saw a massive difference and even though it's so what differences did they see sorry <laughs> now i'm interviewing you i'm just interested <laughs> yeah <laughs> um for me I saw a difference only when I took over a certain amount or when I was really down because I tend to eat pretty well. So I guess I'm really topped off all the time and I'm really, yeah. really on my recovery. So I really try to not get beat a base level. And it's really obvious for me. I start to lose focus. I start to not pay attention at all to anybody. I'm not as happy as I usually am or I'm not smiling as much. And those are the, the, the main signals for me. And then after yeah. that, it's energy Pfft, just completely drops after that. Um, cool. So before it gets to that, if I see that I'm like wandering off mentally, I'll go ahead and I'll have, if I don't have food, food nearby or anything, I'll have, I'll keep a couple of those caps um, in like close to me, like in a bag or something like that. I'll pop mm -hmm. those and like a solid hour to two hours, like I'll see, like you don't feel like it feeling a lot better like not particularly me i feel just that i level off somehow like i get to this base where i'm feeling a lot better i'm not up here but i'm not down here as yes. well i'm like I'm at, I'm at a much better place my right. dad on the other hand he's a lot he, he's he's around 55 ish he says it's like taking like a red bull you know like a like a mild but version of a, of a red bull yeah and my 
yeah, I guess so, right? Yeah, that's a little right. <laughs> um, but but I gave him the multiple organ one, so there's a very small amount of liver in it. So hmm. there's there's one that's like multiple organs, has heart, spleen, uh, and a couple of other things, and including nice. liver. So my dad saw that, and my brother, my older brother, he's around like thirty five ish, thirty six ish, I think. He also he started doing boxing again, and he, after like taking a very long time off of working out, and he started seeing that he felt a lot better. He's like, yeah, I feel like energized, man. I feel like a lot better, you know? And I could see he, that he felt <laughs> different when he started yeah. taking those pills. And when he stopped taking them, I also saw it. So yeah, it definitely makes a difference. I think, uh, nice. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good way, but fermenting liver, that's some other level stuff. <laughs> and, uh, let me know how that goes. I like to ferment stuff, but I, I yeah. meat is at one <laughs> point where, I like to leave it to the pros <laughs> and especially with liver. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, let me know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. If someone has technology that can record smell, I would send that to me because I imagine that uh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh no, no, no. You don't want that technology to come out. That's the, the too many people are going to use it. Are you going to use your powers for, for evil? Can you imagine yeah, all probably. the pranks? <laughs> um, it, I will definitely do. I will definitely update with a, a specific video for fermenting living once I've done it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be looking out and definitely send me a message or something. Hey, what's out? Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, wanted to ask you one other question in regards mm -hmm. to all this. Um. So, you've you've done your research. You've done your stuff. You've found that some fermented stuff works for you. Water kefir looked like it helped you out you like it it tastes good to you yeah. so when did you start like actually looking into the carnivore diet ish or keto just like super going like super strict into it or are you strict or are you not strict or what what how does your daily meal plan kind of look you know that's that's my question okay. so let me go back let's say maybe let's say go back 12 years roughly that's when i started being keto based shall we say so i would be keto pretty much as a base every day so what, what, what every... sorry about so i'm sorry to yeah. interrupt you what what mm -hmm. how do you define keto based because that for me like it's could be a little bit different I, i've heard too many terminologies of keto and yes yeah. okay so, so some it? sort of protein source i've never been vegetarian at all so there would always be some sort of meat-based protein of some kind okay. and a lot of fat which at the time probably was a lot of coconut oil and butter mm -hmm. and then low carb vegetables so not too many root vegetables or that sort of thing although at at times I've, I've been doing cyclic ketogenic diets so then maybe once a week i've had sweet potatoes or that sort of thing okay but there have been a lot of low carb vegetables just fried or you know baked something like that with a lot of fat so that has been my base but then to combat my sugar addiction i've been into the uh, keto sweets oh, okay you know having them every day and eating excessive amounts of them and that's i think that is really really bad for you so a lot of almond based you know pancakes and um, keto brownies i've been doing my own low carb chocolate just buying like raw cacao and um, you know that sort of thing and it tasted didn't even taste good but i kept eating it just to eat something because i had the sugar cravings and eventually, wow. you know, every now and then you decide that I can't stand this anymore. I'm going to go and have ice cream. You go buy ice cream and cookies and, you know, you just have a large pig out that might last three days and then back on the diet. So I've done that many, many times. It snowballs, definitely. So do you, yeah. do, does that still happen right now? Or is that like um, that used to happen back in the day? That mostly happened back in the day. So about two years ago. I tried the carnival diet for the first time. In the beginning, I was like, why would anyone not eat vegetables? I'm sure they're good for your gut bacteria, at least. If nothing else, they should be good for your gut bacteria. Once I was convinced that that was not necessarily the case, I tried it out. And But I ate a lot of you know, salami and smoked meat just to 
stay sane because like, this must be the most boring diet on earth seriously <laughs> just eating meat who it, can do it i need some sort of taste it, it does get a little mundane the carnivores <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, the 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 to the death carnivores will tell you out there that it doesn't mm. in my opinion if you know how to cook and you mm. know how to use your pots and pans and you have all this array of culinary um knowledge <laughs> Not that I have all like uh, that much of it, but I have a decent amount in my yeah. in my opinion. It can get boring. It can definitely get boring. <laughs> I spent three years becoming a chef when I was sixteen, between sixteen and nineteen. So I know how to cook. I can't it's imagine still... how that was like like being restricted. What are your ingredients? Meat and salt and pepper. Great. What are we making today? Yeah, <laughs> we're making steak. <laughs> and tomorrow. Steak again. Yeah, mm, steak. Because I don't even eat fish. I don't like it. So <laughs> I don't even get to eat that. But I, I do Probabilities like it, so. of variation went down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, okay. um, it went okay. I, I did lose some weight. I felt okay on it. But mm. so after that, I've actually been meat-based. Mm. I did at some point try a 30... I started a 30-day strict carnivore diet. Okay. Which meant I, I was doing beef and i was allowing myself to eat pork but no eggs no dairy and i did have chicken broth that i had made before as well but not eating chicken so that's why i was doing i think i lasted about 16 days oh wow around day 13 i started to feel really down and that just went downhill and i love the sun if anything gets me in a good mood it's the sun and on day 16, it was sun and it was nice. And I was sitting out and, I, and normally I would just get this super dopamine hit and just feel so great. And I just felt like life is not worth living. I just want to kill myself. Oh, wow. So I went down to the shop and bought lots of frozen blueberries and I had a whole bowl of them. And I was just like, this is heaven. <laughs> I felt so much better after that. Now, it could have been that I didn't eat enough fat, although after five six days i started making you know wagyu meat it's really fatty and i had some wagyu burgers and i tried to eat that and i made some pork rinds etc i didn't feel good hmm. so now i'm not a strict carnivore i'm eating most i don't eat carbs every day uh, but i do have blueberries in my freezer i have a fijoa tree right outside the window and it drops fruit right now so i go eat some of those there is a fig tree that has some figs in the park where i'm walking my dogs when i walk past if i see a fig that is edible i'll just eat it so i'm kind of more of a you know an opportunistic carnivore i guess no so, that that sounds really sorry to interrupt you yeah. i think that sounds really cool because it, it, you came like it's it's amazing like and there's again um where self-quantification comes in you saw what you've learned in the past you went to school mm. you did your research <laughs> you, you you found out like it's important like it, it really is important because a lot of people in my opinion talk out of their ass they really do and i'm sorry to say <laughs> it that way yeah. um and they're really super dogmatic about something they follow a lot of people without doing their research but you did all that plus you started coping with all your experiences like you say you called it a sugar addiction i wouldn't say it was even a sugar addiction. There's just something that really draws you to it. And it sounds like you've tried to fight it. And there's a difference between, you know, um, I guess you could say that's an addict of some kind. But there's a difference when there's a very natural impulse coming from within yeah. versus something like uh, uh, like brownies or stuff like that. That I think does that's that's definitely <sighs> like a super addiction, which yeah. is a tasty addiction. But uh, like if you're eating fruits or stuff like that, how how do you say that's an addiction? Like you're you're kind of coded no. for that in some it's in some ways. And you found the middle ground, in my opinion, like where you're like, okay, I tried this carnivore thing, I tried this keto lifestyle, and right now, like I I realize that I'm not gonna get away from these sugars. I'm not gonna stop being this way. So, um, you've lessened yeah. the sugars and the carbs, and you've like drawn in like fruit and stuff like that. And yeah, but I, I want to add that I'm not perfect. I still transgress every now and then. I'm going to admit it on YouTube. M most of my followers know this, that I had a period not very long ago. We had a lockdown here yeah. um, about 
eight weeks ago now, maybe nine, eight, yeah, something like that. And one week into the lockdown, they decided to fire 50% of the employees. And I had to take over two people's jobs. So I'm doing three people's job. And I don't even know how to do their job. And I just could not cope. And I just reverted to eating crap for a week and a half. Not every day, but I was not in control at all. And it was just like, whoa, really, Pim, come on, shape up. It's, that was it's, just too much for me, you know, to cope with mentally. And sometimes it's, those it's, things are going to happen. It's really tough on those situations. And uh, on the other side, on the whole perfect side, Pim, I still don't know anybody who is perfect. And I don't think <laughs> I'll ever get to meet him. So don't don't worry about that one. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like you've, you've worked through it and you're, you've acknowledged it in one way or another. There's some people that really let that. I talk to in Mexico, especially in Mexico, some of my friends that I have haven't seen in a long time. And I tell them, dude, you're eating that, dude, that's crap. And they're completely oblivious to the fact that that is uh, that that that's that kind of food is terrible for them. And that's mm. where the difference is. You've you've educated yourself somewhat in the realm. You've tried to delve into it. Why am I like this? Why? Why? Yeah. Why do I feel like this? This massive attraction versus those people that have that. But they don't question it and they just go for it and they're like, mm, okay, yeah. whatever, you know. Um, Absolutely. So and that's... if I can make um, a little plug for, I have a training on Friday the 5th of June, actually, which will teach people my three mega super helpful tools that I'm using to actually, you know, get rid and re get rid of or control my cravings so that I'm not fighting those cravings. I'm rather just allowing them. So if anyone wants to, you know, take part of that, um, I can give you the URL where they can sign up. So it's totally free. It's just an hour okay. uh, invite only on YouTube. So if anyone wants to actually uh, see what I'm doing. Yeah, de definitely. Right. I'll leave the link down in the description for you guys. So cool. go ahead and check that out. I, I, I'm, I'm actually going to be there. I'm, I want to see what she has to cool. say. Or I might just get the insight scoop back after the video. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah thanks yeah so, so it would be 5 p.m on est on the 5th of june if you can't make it live it's fine i'm gonna send you the replay link if you're signed up but i'm not posting on youtube for anyone to see okay. i want it to kind of be a little bit of a safe space as well yeah because it, it can definitely I, I can see where there can be some hostility towards yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely go ahead and check that out, guys. I'll leave the description. Uh, I'll leave the link down in the description below. Um, cool. But yeah, one. I think my one of my last questions to you, because I know this is we've been going on for some time now, um, is have you tried fasting along with any of this? And if you have, what are some of the findings that you've had? Um, I like OMAD eating once a day. Mm. Um, Same here. After, yeah, I, I really do like that. It, it it does deal with a lot of the cravings because as soon as I start having three meals a day or something like that, so if I'm eating breakfast and then, you know, I'm going to be hungry for lunch, I might have something then. The thing is that I'm I'm hungry, but I'm not really hungry. So I will eat, but I cannot eat a lot. But if I'm eating once a day, wow, I'm really enjoying that food and I can eat a lot more. So right now I'm not actually OMAD and it's sort of a, I don't know if I damaged myself a little bit when I went off for that week and a half. It took me a while to get fully back on track. I was pretty good after that week and a half, but now I'm kind of, I think it's still dealing with it. I'm having my egg coffee in the morning. So that's three eggs and coffee and butter. And that will just sustain me until I'm having my large meal. So I'm not OMAD. I'm kind of coffee and then OMAD, if you like. Coffee <laughs> and then OMAD. And... No, yeah. no, no, that's... that's... Uh, and that kind of keeps me sane at work. It's, it's something, you know, it's so stressful at work that I'm just start thinking about I'm being hungry. And it's that emotional thing I was talking about. Mm -hmm. that I'm trying to distract myself from the emotional pain of having to try and learn new things and not knowing and having the pressure from everywhere. But at least I'm kind of eating my carnivore-ish way now and I can deal with it that way. So at the moment, I'm doing that. But in general, I like OMA. It makes me feel really good and it makes me enjoy my food much more. 
And it's, I never have to kind of have that discussion with myself. Should I eat now or shouldn't I? Or what should I have? How much should I eat? It's just like, nah, I'm not eating until I'm having my main meal. And that's it. So much easier to do. And yeah. if you want to lose any fat weight, that's the way to do it. You need to get your insulin down. Once the insulin is down, you can tap into your fat stores. Boom, done. Having three meals per day, even if it's carnivore, will yeah. prevent your insulin from going down. So whereas you might not put weight on, if you want to lose any weight, that's not how you do it. Yeah, in my opinion. I, I, I agree. And I, I think you, you approached it in a very healthy way when you said, because um, the whole three egg thing, for me, I found that I have a massive choline deficiency. And okay. uh, once I started taking choline, like extra choline pills, I realized, let's see if it really is a choline or if I'm going insane. Because I really liked having right. eggs and I never really knew why. But when I ate eggs, I was on top of it. And so cholines are, are found to be one of like the highest sources of um, choline. Eggs yeah. have the highest sources of choline um, out there. And so I started taking, um, uh, I can't remember what it is, GPS alpha. I think that's what it's called. It's like the most okay. bioavailable form of choline. Mm -hmm. And I started taking that and my focus skyrocketed like wow. again, like back when I wasn't, it felt like back when I was in school playing my instrument, which is my highest peak ever like my concentration was through the roof yeah. whenever i was playing my instrument um for some reason playing an instrument just I, I i can attest to that it gives it gets your brain functioning in a completely different way so have you found that eating those eggs like has helped you out like or is it just like i you just chose eggs because they're perfect for the morning <laughs> no as i said i don't notice anything of anything <laughs> It's just like it sounds I like you're a very fast methylator. Like you just get everything out of your like, boom, boom, like in and out. I, I think out. so. Yes. No, it's just I I started out drinking bulletproof coffee, but I didn't quite like it. But adding the three eggs to a bulletproof coffee it makes it taste like coffee custard. And I do that's I stopped drinking it because I actually do use some stevia in there mm. to because I don't like just coffee. So I cut it up, but now I actually start drinking it on purpose. And I'm not even addicted to coffee. I can stop coffee anytime. I don't have a problem with that. I've never been addicted to it. I can drink coffee for two years straight every day and then stop it. No headaches, no nothing. It's, it's strange, but the sugar, different story. I, I agree with it. Um, I think I, I totally agree with that. <laughs> uh, but uh, And and the, uh, the other thing that I was going to say about the whole your whole routine is like how you have that in the morning and then you have nothing you don't eat until the food but the way you said it was um i can't remember exactly how you worded it because it was a little bit back i got caught up in a lot of things but you <laughs> said it in like this perfect way where like i'm gonna have this in the morning and then <laughs> until my main meal like that's it yeah like there's nothing in between it's not like oh i want a snack or anything like that or um i'm not gonna have anything else because i want to get lean or anything it's like no it's just yeah. i have this in the morning i have this in the afternoon and i found out that with my parents, my grandpa, like I saw them, like the way that you see that that's how they usually ate. Like it was like, we yes. have this in the morning and uh, we don't have anything in the afternoon and we're cool. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit older than you, but I do remember when I was a kid, okay. it was like we had breakfast <laughs> <laughs> and then we didn't even really have lunch, but it was like, oh, do you want something? Have a sandwich, you know, but just one because I want you to be hungry for dinner. You can't have anything in between. It wasn't like I was hungry an hour before dinner. No, nah, we're eating soon. You have to wait. I don't mm -hmm. want to ruin your appetite. Like I wasn't allowed to eat. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's such a healthy way of actually looking at it because when you go and snack all the time, you're not really hungry. And that's what's happening to me from eating three times per day. Yeah. It but having had those six meals per day for so many years because I thought that that was the best way of doing it to always keep my energy up because I was exercising so much. I've just kind of ruined my mindset and I'm ruined my body at the same time. Yeah. And I needed to reset that. So one of my tools I'm talking about is, is the planning and we don't necessarily need to plan every day, but we need to take control of what we're doing with our prefrontal cortex, which is the planning part of the brain. It's not the reptilian brain that will tell you to just eat, 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 because it makes us feel good. This is the other part that is actually being rational and can see the reward at the end of the journey. That is, we want that to be in control. So if I decide, okay, I'm going to have my egg coffee, but then I'm not going to eat until four o'clock or whenever I'm having my main meal. 
yeah. and that's done. It's non-negotiable. You just do it. Yeah. And you free up so much space in your brain because I've spent so many years having discussions with myself about whether I should go eat now or later. Do I need to go shop? Do I, do I have sugar? Can I make a cake? <laughs> you know, it's just that constant going on and on and on and getting rid of that. It's just making me so productive and make me feel really alive and as if I can actually accomplish something in life rather than mm -hmm. just thinking about food all day long. Because that, I mean, it gets a bit boring after a while, but you just yeah. keep doing it. <laughs> it sounds like you figured it out in that sense. And uh, I, one last thing I want to ask you, have you found that you've um, lost any weight while doing this? Because it sounds like also since you've since you started exercising and doing all that, like one of the, that's my cat. If you saw see him in the shot. Uh, uh, yes. So, have you lost any weight? Absolutely. Doing strict carnivore, strict ish, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't need to do just beef and water or whatever, but it's with some blueberries or whatever. I do absolutely lose weight. But what I have noticed is so going off of the carnivore diet for 10 days, as I did, let's say it was 10, I didn't actually count them, but roughly 10 days uh, just a few weeks ago, I put on weight really, really quickly. It's like you have made your body work and being efficient, burning fat and using the fuel that you're using. And then you swap it like that overnight, start eating the crap. And it's like, whoa, what's happening? We're going to store all of this. And I just like gain weight so quickly, much quicker than I have ever done going off of the keto diet, which is a bit crazy. So I've lost most of it now, but I still have some of that fat left on my body, which is really, really strange from just having been off of the diet for a short period of time no. uh, so yeah you you're getting punished when you go off uh, much at least i do I, I get punished much harder than i would if i ever went off of the keto diet yeah. i think it's probably gut bacteria that is so different on a keto diet to a carnivore diet and then to crap diet the the way i equate that is um or the way i like to think about it is because i've seen the exact same thing if i if i'm doing the carnivore diet and it's really cool to find somebody that actually has like very similar findings to me because a lot yeah, of times cool. i find people that have that they get off of the carnivore diet a little bit and they're all right for a while they don't gain as much 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 fat but my body's <laughs> super reactive as to what i'm hearing is yeah. the same as to you as uh, super reactive when I get off of it, I find the exact same experience. I put a lot, a lot of weight really quick, but I like to think about it as like the machinery has completely changed from maybe you were building tanks before with carbohydrates and now you're building airplanes and now the yeah. machinery has to get some middle ground and like it's, it's now they have to switch all the machinery to make tanks again because you started giving it carbs once again. You know, this is my little yep. analogy, um, but I think the optimal thing that you're doing that I think is what the optimal thing that I found as well for, for me as, you know, um, as an individual is I have found a way to keep a small amount of carbs in there, whether it be blueberries, berries is the one thing that I do add blueberries and mm -hmm. just berries in general, you know, and I try not to go too crazy with them every now and then Greek yogurt, um, and then mostly meats and that'll keep the carbs low enough that my body knows that it gets an influx of carbohydrates but at the same time um it is mostly fat dependent yeah. and i think like that that way it doesn't feel like boof like it's a complete switch like you were eating fat right now and now you're just eating all carbs like it's yeah. there's a middle ground there it's like mostly fat but then a little bit of carbs there but I think for you as well, you, you're storing a lot of those carbs that you're eating straight away. So you're not really taxing your system. So I don't think they're going to do a lot of damage to you. Correct. Whereas someone who is a couch potato and they would do that, maybe it's not ideal. Yeah. It gets me mad. My girlfriend can have as many carbs as she wants and she won't store a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what is the it might still be causing her troubles, you know, raising her yeah. blood sugar. Yeah. releasing lots of insulin, glycating the proteins in her body, etc. You don't you don't see that. And yeah, you know, maybe in 20, 30 years' time she will notice. Nah, she's gonna be working out by then. I promise. <laughs> I've been I've been I've been with her for nine years, my like uh she's been getting better about like her food, like her fruit like the way she used to eat. Oh my yeah. god. It was really tough for me. Uh but then we mm. both kind of found the middle ground and now we're both um uh, she's carnivore ish and i'm a lot yeah. more carnivore than she is she's, yeah, so awesome. 
yeah so it's, it it's cool that i found yeah and i was gonna say how do you find that was the, the that was i guess this is gonna be my last question again we got pretty long <laughs> <into> it. again again <laughs> how have you found that balance um of eating this way and you know still seeing your loved ones and at the same time you know like this is how i eat and maybe not disturbing some of those uh i guess moments because for me breakfast like let's if i was eating breakfast with a family i'll go ahead and i'll stop my whatever routine that i'm doing if i'm eating with my family that i haven't seen for a while you know we don't get together that often or yeah. that weekend with the girlfriend you know this is her time this is very special time for her like what do you want to eat babe like let's what, what do you want like how do you balance that life so first of all i I'm from Sweden originally. I spent 10 years in the UK and now I'm in New Zealand since two years back. So my family is back in Sweden. So I don't have that problem most of the time. Okay. Uh, my boyfriend is also into carnivory, although uh, he likes drinking beer and he has more like the pizza cravings, the, the savory stuff. So if he would transgress, it doesn't really bother, bother me because I'm into sugar. So as long as he doesn't go and buy chocolate and cookies, I'm cool with that. But mm. we we moved for a while and then we moved back here. We're in Nelson, which is really, really nice. And it's sunny and you can do all sorts of outdoors activities. We're like going out hiking and kayaking in the sea and you know that sort of thing. And you can do everything here. Mm -hmm. And I told you we have a park next to our house. It's like five minutes walk away from here. Not even that, but during summer they have like a food market every thursday yeah so we just decided that every thursday if we want to we're gonna go out and we're gonna have a meal out whether that be in the park or if we go somewhere else so we kind of have this agreement that if we want to do something we want to just enjoy life like normal people we're going to do that on thursdays now it's winter the market's closed and besides after lockdown nothing has been you know open so we haven't done that for a while Amazon. But yeah, <laughs> that's the only thing that's been open permanently. Yeah. No, so, so we just allow ourselves to do that every now and then. Obviously, not every day because that probably both would feel pretty shit, but it works. And as I said, I don't really notice it. I can have a cheat day and I won't notice it in my body. I won't feel bad. The only thing is if it triggers my cravings and I want to continue doing that. But if I have a cheat day, if you want to use that word then and i don't eat sugar i just you know i can eat bread i can eat pizza anything that doesn't really trigger my cravings so i'm fine if i do that no. not everyone can do that on the carnival diet but you know yeah there are other, last night for example we had we put up lots of prosciutto uh, cheese liver pate and we did have some nuts and dried fruit in there as well, which we don't actually normally do. So that was the cheeky part and some fried halloumi cheese. Mm. And I was like, go for it. You yeah, know? that's as good. And it feels like a cheat, but it's not actually that bad. And I feel great today. I don't have a problem. I don't have extra cravings from having a few dried cranberries. Mm. Is that the ideal diet? No, don't care. It was nice. We had a really nice evening. That's what I care about, you know. I think I think that's the thing that matters the most. I think that's the ultimate thing. You feel good. You realize yeah. what your body reacts to and what it doesn't, and you are in a way better baseline that you were before. And I think that takes time, self quantification, and a lot of thought yeah. and a lot of grit as well to to be able to uh, put new habits on yourself. You know, I think it, yeah. it's, it's it's really tough. So I think we're that's gonna uh, anything that you want to add to any of this, anything that you. Um, actually, yeah. You no, know, I, I like what you said. Saying said about the habits. It's you know that's one of the things. It's not like having a goal and know why you're doing it, and then you know adjust things around that and make it into a habit for whatever it is that you want to be doing. So some people, you know, you don't have to do a hundred percent carnivore diet if that's not what you want to do. It should feel like something that you want to do and that you can sustain. However far you want to go in that journey, it doesn't really matter. Just start somewhere. And if you're feeling better, you're probably going to be motivated to do it better in the future as well. Get it. Just my take on it. Get it. Get on it. Yeah. Get it done. Yeah. Um, well, to, um, 
we're gonna looks like we're gonna wrap this up finally <laughs> like oh, cool. I, i've been telling that i'm gonna be cutting it off you know but i've really enjoyed talking to you it's been, really been awesome and thanks for yeah. con for contacting me uh, I, uh again i didn't want to see a lot of the videos on your channel but now i'm like super intrigued because i wanted to keep this <laughs> as fresh as possible you know um yeah. uh, I, I wanted to see, okay, what's going on with her? Like, I'm legitimately like super interested as to what to, to see, oh, how is she handling things? Nice. So, so tell the people in the camera what you got, what you got going on right now. Um, what are some of the stuff? Where can we find you? What are your handles and in Instagram or where's all that? So, yeah, my main way of actually communicating with people right now is actually on YouTube so that you can actually search for my name. My channel is actually called Pim Johnson, but I call, I'm calling it Keep the Carnival Perspectives because I've started to interview a lot more people. And I also have another channel, which is my new baby to kind of separate the two, which I'm calling the Sugar Channel. And we're just wrapping up with a 30 day no sugar channel challenge there right now so there will be more videos coming out there both some old ones that i made before and some new ones um instagram i am on instagram and i'm trying to be more active and i feel like i'm old granny and i'm not very good with you know social media and technology but uh, life without cravings is what that one is called okay. and you can also search for that on facebook finding this facebook book group life without cravings okay well, I'll yeah. leave all that stuff down there, guys, for you. That way you guys can go ahead and check all of her stuff out. Um, if you can just send me all of those handles, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. but Thank you so much for having me on there. It, it was it was cool to be on your channel, too. No problem. My pleasure. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And go to my channel and watch my interview with him, because that was a good one. With who specifically? With you. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I was like, with who specifically? Oh, with me. There you go. Hey. Yeah, if you guys want to double dip, uh, like she, she did the, we did the exact same interview, but it was just completely turned around. You guys have seen yeah. my, my story, but if you want to go ahead and check it out again, yeah. she asked some pretty good questions. Um, but in any case, guys, thanks for joining me on another episode. Go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Zay out. Bye. And Pam out. <laughs> Peace, guys.